So this is Mr. Martin, and uh, these are uh, the notes for math analysis, section 4.1. Uh, this is the day two of the notes. Um, so today we're going to be talking about linear speed and angular speed. Um, and before we uh, get to those two, we're going to talk about uh, arc length. Um, so uh, just a little recap of uh, what we talked about with arc length um, last time. Remember, arc length is just it's a piece of the circumference. So I have a circle and if I pick two points on it and I just look at this part of the circle you know we've got an arc length of s we like to use the variable s and then we've got our radius r <coughs> and um, we were talking if I um, draw a radius to each end of the arc that this angle theta can be calculated again it's important it's going to be calculated in radians by taking the value of s divided by the value of r. So I've got that over here. Okay, and then um, we solved that for s in case we know the radius and we know the angle, we can find the arc length. Again, uh, make sure that when you are solving for arc length that your angle, it's important, angle is in radians. So it's bold, it's underlined. It, now it's highlighted. That's important. Um, so you, you want to get in the habit in this class also of uh, switching back and forth uh, between radians and degrees. Um, you know, so whenever it's appropriate, you want to switch back and forth. All right. So that's a little review of arc length. Moving on to linear speed. So linear speed is um, what you normally would think of if you're driving in your car, how fast are you going? If you are running on the track, how fast are you going? Um, so linear speed measures how fast a particle moves. Um, speed of a car travels along a road. Um, now for our purposes, the path of travel is going to be along a circle. So the linear speed of a par uh, particle traveling along a circle is calculated by taking the arc length and dividing it by time. Okay, it's really distance divided by time if you remember that from one of your science classes. Um, in this case our distance is arc length. Now when we talk about angular speed, angular speed measures how fast the angle is changing as the particle is traveling the circular path. So the angular speed is calculated by taking the central angle and dividing it by the time. Okay, again, theta is measured in radians. All right, so sometimes you'll be given a problem where the angle is in degrees. You're going to have to convert it to radians in order to use these formulas. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples here. <coughs> the first example, we've got a clock. So we've got a little clock here. Here's 12, here's 6, here's 3, here's 9. It only has four numbers. So we got it on sale. So here's the two hands. And then we've got the second hand over here. So the second hand of a clock is 12 centimeters long. And we want to find the linear speed of the tip of the hand as it goes around the clock. So the first thing that we need to do is um, let's figure out how far um, the tip of the second hand is going to um, travel in an arbitrary amount of time. Usually we'll look at um, a minute. Okay, so a minute would be 60 seconds. So distance tip will travel in one minute, okay, 60 seconds. Okay, and again, this, this 60 seconds is just an arbitrary number. And it's going to be equal to 2 pi r. You'll recognize that's uh, just the formula for circumference of a circle. Okay, so um, since the radius is uh, 12 centimeters, then it's going to be 2 times pi times 12 
or 24 pi centimeters in one minute. Okay, again, this 60 seconds is just arbitrary. That's um, going to be a revolution, so that's uh, going to be convenient for us. So now, um, since we've got this 24 pi centimeters, that's going to be the arc length. Arc length. the second hand moves in 60 seconds. So now that we have an arc length, which happens to be the whole circumference of the circle, but that's okay, and we have a time, we can find our linear speed. So our linear speed is going to be arc length divided by time which in our formula is s over t and again our s in this case since we use 60 seconds um, which gives us a full revolution is going to be the circumference so that's 24 pi centimeters divided by 60 seconds which gives us about 1.26 centimeters per second. Okay, so that's going to be the linear speed of the tip of the hand. All right, moving on to uh, example two. Again, if you have questions, uh, make sure you write those down in the uh, margins of your paper so you don't forget and ask me the next time you see me in class. Okay, so number two, a 17 inch diameter car tire makes 10 and a half revolutions per second. Uh, for part A, we're going to find the angular speed, and for part B, we're going to find the linear speed. Alright, so let's take a look at this uh, 10.5 revolutions per second. So it's going to be moving 10.5 revolutions uh, in one second, and that we know that one full revolution is going to equal 2 pi radians. Okay, so um, we can figure out how many radians it will go per second using the 10.5 and the 2.5. Um, so therefore the tire turns 10.5 revolutions per second times 2 pi radians which is equal to 21 pi radians per second okay so if you notice the units that we end up with here we've got radians which is a theta an angle and we've got seconds so we've got really a theta over a time so what that means is that our angular speed which is theta over t is just 21 pi radians per second all right again make sure you write down questions Moving on to part B, we know that linear speed is equal to S over T, so arc length over time, and we know that S is equal to R times theta. Okay, so if I substitute R times theta in for S, then we get R theta over t, and I'm going to split this apart a little bit and make that r times theta over t. And if you notice, theta over t, this is our angular speed. Okay, so our um, linear speed ends up being the radius times the angular speed. 
and we've got all these values. Um, going back up here, we knew that the diameter was 17 inches, so our radius is going to be half of that. It's going to be 8.5 inches. So now we've got uh, 8.5 times 21 pi, and we get Uh, let's see this is about it's about 560.77 inches per second so we're not quite done yet I'm not sure if you realized why we're not quite done yet um, because our units here are inches per second and we want to convert it to miles per hour okay so convert to miles per hour so I've got 560.77 inches per one second and then I know that there's 60 seconds in one minute and I know there's 60 minutes in one hour try that again hour so we're really just doing some unit analysis like you would in your science classes so that gets us to hours then we need to convert the inches to miles so I know that one foot has 12 inches and I know that one mile is 5,280 feet and we'll plug all this into our calculator and we end up with the linear speed is about 31.86 miles per hour. There you go. Okay, so again, write down any questions that you have. Uh, make sure you're uh, prepared to do some work in class, and uh, we'll see you next time.